Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome back to Law Folds. This is episode number 41 on this beautiful map, and thank you all so much for returning for yet another episode. So, what's been going on? Um, well, I'll tell you what's been going on in my virtual world. Um, so, we are on Law Folds, as I said, and this is episode number 41, as I said. And this is um, mid-spring, so this is essentially the same game day that we were in um, the previous episode, um, I do believe. And um, we are on field number nine. Now, field number nine is a uh, is a leased field that we essentially picked up um, through the Bank of Hagenstadt. We I did. I think I talked a little bit about maybe wanting to use that mod, and I did go ahead and uh, load that up. And so um, we have leased this field as I'm having a little bit of issue here talking and getting things going um, a little bit early here in the morning. It's uh, just after 7 o'clock on Saturday morning. And um, I have only applied about a quarter cup of caffeine to my system. And so um, these kind of things are, are expected here with me in my world. So anyway... Uh, Bank of Hagenstadt. I did install that mod. That mod allows us to um, lease. It allows us to lease fields. It allows us to borrow money. It allows us to borrow a little bit more money than maybe what the base uh, Giants game allows us to buy. Uh, but also keep in mind that with the Seasons mod, your um, your your available um, your available uh, borrowing power is a little bit stronger with the seasons mod um, than what you get in the base uh, in the base giants default game simply because the uh, modders the developers of the seasons mod truly understand that in order to get the most out of this mod um, and the fact that it takes you a lot longer because you're you're gonna you're gonna basically be forced to play you know an entire year starting in the spring and working your way up so if you start a brand new map and we've talked about this multiple times uh, but if you start a brand new map with the seasons mod um, essentially you know you're not going to have any fields that are going to be available for you to harvest so either you need to um, you know sort of tweak your if you're on PC tweak your uh, tweak your money so that you can buy a few extra fields um, maybe uh, do something similar to what I did in Pine Cove Farm which was uh, tweak your vehicle XML file and give yourself um, some uh, some additional grain in storage that you can you know essentially sell um, as you are preparing and you know seeding and fertilizing and opening up your fields and everything um, in the springtime. So just some things that, you know, you, you need to kind of take into consideration um, there with that. So um, we are, so so this is a leased field. This is field number nine. The BGA is just right up, uh, right up there past that cell point. Uh, you'll see the, the domes of the BGA. So we're going to get the BGA fired up here on this map um, and just do a very small scale operation. So obviously field number nine is not very big. Um, it's nothing similar to the field that we planted in corn on uh, Pine Cove Farm for those of you that are watching both series. Um, it's nothing that size. I don't think, you know, we won't get a million, uh, over a million liters of chaff out of this field, uh, clearly. So, um, uh, let's see. So, some tractor upgrades and some other equipment upgrades. So, this, this cedar... Um, I was actually going to go with a um, with a John Deere row crop seeder. I believe it was the uh, 2700. I think as I failed to lift up. Oh, no, there we go. Um, we'll come back around and fix some of these gaps here. Um, and I can see that this is not a direct seed. Um, cedar and the plow missed a few spots as I'm trying to get my my chair my chair is just wanting to roll all over the place this morning and so my apologies as I try to get my my bottom um, 
in my chair to basically stay put. Okay, so um, the, uh, the the challenges of a the challenges of a, a virtual farmer, virtual YouTube farmer on an early Saturday morning. Um, so anyway, um, back to equipment upgrades. Uh, the John Deere, the John Deere row crop seeder that I wanted to use for this map just did not work out. Um, there. The, the odd thing is, is the turning radius is just was the, basically um, huge, humongous. Um, there's quite a it's quite a tight turn to get into the BGA um, for to begin with, especially from the direction that you're coming from the main farm. And I basically had difficulties making that turn and ended up having to kind of finagle my way. Uh, in through the cell point there and back around and come back and then come down this this highway and then back straight back up and then come in at the angle uh, anyway that's that's none of your concern necessarily but um, I also had upgraded our John Deere tractor to a seven uh, seven series John Deere tractor with it it's, it's a mod that I'm sure you guys have seen on many other uh, YouTube channels um, in recent Probably in in recent weeks, um, I know that uh, uh, I know that simulate. I know that um, I know that Landy Kid and uh, a few others have been using that particular uh, that particular tractor. And so we'll just uh, we'll come around here and we'll get rid of we'll get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And drop that down. And come in here. I think this will we'll clean up some of these other smaller rows here uh, as well. Anyway, so, but it seemed to have some challenges. Um, it seemed to cause my frame rates to um, be a little bit, you know, erratic on this map. And, and my frame rates on this map are pretty solid. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty solid. Now, now admittedly, um, with Pineco Farm, I will admit that you know I've got I've got so much equipment in that main farm area that that's probably not doing me any favors um, in in that area when I when I drive through the main farm area um, that is probably the much of my problems with frame rates is because of that and I think what we'll do is we'll come we'll finish that out we'll lift this up and we'll come up here to the um, the south end of this field and finish finish that off and then come back and finish the north side I've got both edges east and west is done so um, so anyway so the the I think it's the 2700 it's it's a row crop planter it's not quite as big as the DB 90 that we're using on Pine Cove farm but in any event it's a nice uh, it was a nice looking uh, row crop cedar but the turning radius is just so requires such a wide turning radius that it's just not going to work out on this map so that's the story about um, a bit of that money because obviously I bought that and I used it to um, seed about a quarter of this field uh, maybe a little over half of this field and I realized that it was going to be a problem and so I, uh, I scrapped what was going to be that episode um, and um, sold off both the the John Deere uh, because it, like I said, it was causing some problems with my frame rates, and um, sold off the, uh, the the John Deere 2700 row crop seeder. So then uh, I decided, okay, well, you know, I wanted to uh, I wanted to upgrade the tractor situation just a little bit because um, here on this map we've obviously we've got our um, we've got our New Holland which is has been and it's it has served us well it's been it's been kind of the workhorse tractor for us um, it's it's been sort of you know the the the, the challenger that the, the nice challenger a yellow challenger that we have on um, on pine cove that's what the new holland has been for us here on this map it's been doing our plowing and stuff like that so and shortly we're going to head back to the main farm before we start seeding our other cornfield and uh, I will show you some additional uh, enhancements that we've done and um, and then you'll kind of understand why I decided to 
go ahead and replace the John Deere that really didn't work that well because of the frame rate issues um, with this Fent 900. Now the Fent 900, this is just the default um, uh, version, and so it's it works it works quite well. Um, so I think kind of my, my thought process is is that, um, and again you'll, you'll you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about when we get back to the main farm area. Um, but the giant the uh, the New Holland is going to continue to obviously be an integral part of our farm. But we also needed another tractor that was capable of just a little bit more uh, horsepower than what we could get out of the John Deere, what we could get out of the JCB. And uh, I decided to just leave the Sammy, the little Sammy up at the, uh, at the sheep farm. And so all of that is, uh, is fine. So we'll head back over here. We'll fix this one little spot here. Not too picky about um, getting everything done here. Uh, it's okay. And I'm not going to be too worried about the fact that um, we missed a few spots on the plowing. You know, it will affect our yield, but it will only affect our yield slightly. And I'm okay with that. So, hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful week. You guys are watching this on Tuesday. Um, I think the 4th of April, something like that. And um, uh, glad that you have returned for yet another episode I do I really do appreciate that and um, so let's see what else is going on in the world of farm agricultural simulations um, well let's see so um, cattle and crops sent out a email an update uh, I believe I got it on the 31st of March and I, I may have said and trust me folks I'm not a um, I'm not a um, I'm not a wizard or any kind of uh, uh, mystical kind of person. I don't have a crystal ball. If I did, uh, I'd be tuning that crystal ball into the uh, into the lottery numbers uh, so that I could um, win the lottery and uh, be able to retire for my wife and I to both retire so that I could spend more money or I'm sorry, more time, have the money to retire and spend more uh, more time. Uh, playing simulation uh, based games and and doing other things as well I mean I mean trust me I'm not uh, I'm not gonna just you know uh, when I retire in 10 or 12 years whatever uh, however that works out I'm not gonna just game all the time obviously I'm, I've got other commitments and other things to do but you know uh, having the ability to do that so if I were a futurist uh, if I had that crystal ball I would certainly be looking at um, the uh, the lottery numbers but anyway I think I had said that I felt that possibly just possibly that the good folks over at cattle and crops would be giving us an update either towards the end of March or very early April and I'm really glad that they did it in March and didn't put something out in early April especially April Fools April 1 if you're like me I absolutely um, hate April Fools Day um, and I have grown to hate it even more in this age of social media and, um, uh, you know, the 24 hours news cycle and all that kind of stuff even more. Um, I know that maybe the news cycle doesn't do much as far as, as trickery and stuff with regards to April Fool's, but certainly in social media it does. And in pretty much all of the hobbies that I'm involved with, whether it be um, the gaming hobby or... Even um, I've, I've told you guys that uh, uh, I do uh, I do amateur radio. Um, so even in that hobby, there are things that you know come out. People will will put stuff out. I missed a little spot there. That's okay. Um, and we'll put stuff out, fake you know fake stuff. Uh, this thing's coming out or that thing's coming out or whatever, and it's just kind of crazy. So as you can see, it is kind of a of a tight of a tight thing here. So. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to jump out and shut this gate. I normally don't shut gates, um, but we will go ahead and shut this gate just to keep folks out of our leased uh, cornfield there because it's important to us uh, because obviously that's going to get the BGA going and all that good stuff. But you can kind of see how, 
how tight that turn is, especially if you're coming from the main farm, which is obviously the direction that we're headed back. If you've got something that doesn't have a very uh, short uh, or tight turning radius, uh, it's it's difficult. So we'll we'll get our beacons on here and try to be a little bit more realistic as we head back to the main farm. And I will tell you all that I need to tell you once we once we sort of get back there. And I think I've once again failed to activate my um, my track IR software, so it doesn't uh, it's not detecting my head tracker right now. But that's okay. As I get a drink of coffee, boy, it's coffee's good this morning. Um, usually on the weekends, I mix my coffee. Um, I mix my coffee selection up just a little bit. Um, we've got a uh, we've got a Keurig. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's the little um, K cup uh, coffee uh, apparatus um, thingamajig, and we'll go kind of go back the long way here, go around through the through the dairy farm. Uh, because I'll, I'll show you one of our fields here that I'm a bit concerned about. Um, but anyway, we've got a Keurig uh, coffee maker, and I've got a variety of different coffee packs, and I have my favorites. Um, I, like, uh, I like a good Dunkin' Donut um, variety, um, kind of a dark roast. I've got a, another dark roast uh, that I, I typically enjoy. And then um, I've got this other one, and I forget what it's called. I'll... I'll um, I'll try to remember to look at the cake up tomorrow morning um, and I'll tell you about it maybe if I can remember I probably won't I'll probably forget but it's a uh, it's like a two times caffeine uh, version and I, boy is it good is it good so that's what I'm actually having this morning uh, just to give myself a little bit more of a kick in the uh, kick in the pants so to speak all right so you might remember that this field here is the field that we purchased uh, we no longer need our, stro our, uh, our strobes because we're on private land now. Uh, we purchased this field here, uh, so this is owned by us um, and not by anyone else. And so we are plowing it. We, we brought in a hired worker just to help us with that because, um, well, you know, we can't do everything ourselves. And because we, we, we had a, su a successful first season, um, you know, we can afford to, and even though we were bringing in hired help in the first season, uh, we can afford to do that a little bit more uh, the second season. So all will be, uh, all will be good. So this field here, just to your left, um, this is field 33, and this is a field that we owned. It was a field that we uh, planted last year. This is our winter, I believe it's winter wheat. And I wanted to check the grass situation here. Uh, yeah, we're we're coming up, so it's it's we'll, we'll be ready to cut some grass soon. But this field 33 over here, uh, this thing we planted with winter wheat, and um, it's not done a uh, a thing. It's not uh, you know I would have expected that here we are. We're in the second game day of spring, and it's not sprouted at all yet in front of us. Um, right over there as we're turning it's going to be on our right um, I'll get back in the cab and that way you won't run your heads through the through the tree limbs there but the field to our right uh, field 34 that was planted in winter barley and it's looking good and then the same applies uh, as was the case with uh, 33 up here in field number 31 this is our winter canola and it's also not sprouted yet so um, not real sure as to what's going on. I would have thought that by now we would have seen some growth. If we go out there and we, we look at it with farmer's touch, it basically tells us that uh, it's been seeded and that is it. So um, let me just stop this for just a moment because I wanted to talk about a couple of things um, that I've added, I've added to the map as we get out and get away from the tractor there. And I'm not sure why it's beeping still because I'm out of the tractor. Why does it care about parking brake? Alright, this is weird. Okay, that is really weird. Um, hello, I mean we're out of the tractor walking around 
and it's screaming at us because we've got our parking brake on. Uh, and of course, there's no way to remove the parking brake um, when you're not in a vehicle. So I went back and, and undid the parking brake from the Fent. And again, this is the, uh, I'm pretty sure this is just the in-game uh, version Fent 900. Uh, I don't think that's a mod. I'll have to, I would have to check and verify that, but I, I don't, I don't think it is. If it is, it's, it's, it's completely escaped me. So anyway, uh, one little thing that we bought here, we bought this John Deere Gator. Uh, now I know a lot of other folks are using this on their maps. We really didn't have a alternative vehicle on Lawfolds. Um, you know, you might remember that I had uh, picked up a uh, front attacher and the front loader and a bucket to kind of hold the toolbox around in the John Deere. And since we traded the John Deere in for the Fent, um, I decided that it was time that we had some kind of alternative vehicle that we could drive around the farm. And uh, so that's what we picked up was that little John Deere Gator. And it, it's, a, it's a nice looking mod. The only problem with it is it's got this uh, baseball cap that kind of hovers in it so um, clearly either this little shed is haunted or the, the gator is haunted or something or another but you know hey he doesn't bother us and we don't bother him and I think that he actually does uh, some work around the farm for us while we're not watching and so that's helpful so this little Penta 9 uh, DB50 so let me let me kind of tell you why I upgraded that and let me show you this in the store and um, you'll see um, here that it's listed under a Penta. It's a DB50 and it's a $58,000 tipper and it holds 50, I'm um, sorry, it holds 50,000 liters and it holds all this goodness down here. So it'll pretty much uh, do everything that you need it to do on your virtual farm and it'll do it quite well as I just save my game as I'm talking here just because I'm a little freaked out about this, uh, this, uh, this issue here in the tractor and the parking brake and all that good stuff. So our other cornfield is going to be cor uh, field number 27, which is right directly back behind here. So I'm going to sort of mosey over that direction while I kind of explain to you uh, why I decided to, i tell you what, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, fill up with, uh, with seeds uh, while we're here. So um, one of our members of PCSG created that Penta DB50. And let me get another drink of coffee here. Okay, that was two drinks of coffee, but I think you'll understand. Anyway, created that DB50. Um, the I did a little research. The Penta, um, we'll just drive around um, the, uh, the barn here. The Penta brand is uh, appears to be a Canadian company. That's that's kind of what came up, and they make all sorts of uh, various implements. But you know, tippers um, and such as that is sort of their their specialty special speciality. Um, as I struggle to get that word out, let me uh, set the parking brake, and I'll see if it if it's an issue here as we walk around. See, it's not anymore. That's weird. Anyway, must have just been a little giant's glitch. You know, we get them from time to time. So we're going to get back in here, release our parking brake, and head into our field. Um, so it appears to be a Canadian company. Um, and um, and we have already... Um, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to... Did we cultivate this? I can't remember if we've cultivated this. Let me just take a look and see here because... Um, it has been harvested, but it has not been cultivated. So I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change our plans and we're going to need to go with, uh, with field number 32 for our cornfield because since this is not a, um, this is not a direct, uh, a direct seed, um, this is not a direct seed, um, drill. Uh, row crop planter we're not going to be able to plant in that field I don't think so we did cultivate this one over here so I know for a fact that it is good to go and it is ready to go as I drag you back through the bushes there all right so back to the Penta um, a, uh, a member of PCSG created that that's his first very first mod and boy is it uh, is it a nice looking mod 
and many of the the folks that are members of PCSG that are also YouTube uh, folks um, basically uh, have begun using it and um, and so and so that's uh, I wanted to use it I thought it looked great and I believe it it works great I, I've used it I've tested it just a little bit and everything looks good and this is a nine meter uh, set up here and we're good to go there so turn that on and lower and off we go um, and we're still set on corn this is this will be our corn crop for our field for selling um, so anyway uh, I wanted to use it you know it's an upgrade 50,000 liters is that really required for this farm our previous tipper was in the 30,000 range uh, which obviously did us did us just fine um, but because I really wanted to use it I think you understand plus the other thing is is that this is because this is our second season for this map even though I love this map I really really do um, it still captivates me from just the excitement that I feel the, the the beauty that I feel of the map and obviously with seasons mod uh, it really uh, makes this game explode but I think I just wanted to change some things up a little bit to even though we're going to you know essentially going to be planting many of the same fields that um, that we already that we already own um, it uh, will do we'll skip we'll do every other row here um, I just wanted some some something different so that's why I mixed up the equipment just a little bit traded in the John Deere got the fent you know the fent the fent fits in with our uh, with our UK uh, farming here because every pretty much every UK uh, video farm or real life farming video that I see on YouTube uh, they're driving they're driving fence so um, that's going to be fine and it just mixes things up a little bit and um, you know we've worked hard the first season so we can afford a little bit different equipment better equipment bigger equipment um, and so that's kind of where we are and that that will change things up enough for me to make it somewhat exciting um, so that um, you know I don't get bored playing playing this map now you may wonder uh, you may wonder why or you may think I'm not lifting the uh, the cedar as I'm making my turns and I actually I am but because of the um, uh, because of the ground terrain um, mod it um, and because of the implements and the tractor the wheels sink into the soil just a little bit it will cause if you hit a high spot in the ground it will cause it to look like your your cedar is still lowered and you might also if you're using that mod you might recognize the fact that if you are uh, say for example you're raking hay or, 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 or uh, straw or grass for that matter if you're driving around and you're making your turns and you lift up your rake and you drive through a windrow you'll notice that it will it'll mess that windrow up and again it's because it's your tires are sinking in and the implement isn't lifted up high enough to, to essentially bypass that so it, it, it shows that um, you know I guess that's sort of the trade-off for that uh, extra level of immersion that you're you know you know that our tires are sinking in just a little bit and um, it may not be it may not be super realistic but at least it's something that's a little different than you know our normal um, our normal run-of-the-mill um, gameplay see how it's still it's still down but yet I've lifted it up and it's just kind of the way it is and now I've just dropped it down but it's the the ground is is sloping in that area and it's causing that if you don't you know if you don't like that um, then obviously you need to remove that uh, remove that mod Oh yeah, that's really good coffee. I'm going to have to go back upstairs and get another cup of that for sure. So anyway, so our time is almost up. Uh, we're coming up on 30 minutes. So there's no way we're going to get this field done. And I really didn't think that we would get this done. Um, I'm going to take a look and see 
Um, what we need to do um, further on this game day, on this particular map, um, you know, I will say this, that I think that as we're setting, you know, this is obviously episode number 41 of Law Folds, um, and, um, you know, I am committed to doing the rest of this season, because it's a storyline that we want to tell and, and carry out, um, but I don't know if if this if the second season the second go around will be as um, as thorough as the first time around in other words I really don't think that if it took us 40 episodes or 39 episodes to get through season one I don't think and even though that did involve a complete map restart um, somewhere or another in that in that within that numbering system I don't think that season two is going to be 39 episodes. I don't even think it's going to be 30 episodes or even 20 episodes. I think that probably um, I will document enough to where that you feel like you're engaged in the gameplay and you know kind of what's going on and you understand what's happening with the money situation and stuff. But I think that, you know, we'll get through we'll get through some of these tasks that we need to do and it will kind of be a variety of, of doing some of it you know off camera or you know bring bringing you in and letting you see um, you know a portion of it kind of like I did with the first field that I started on planting corn where I had done um, about half of it or maybe a little more than half of it bring you in and you see that take place and then we go and do another small job somewhere on the farm maybe um, you know maybe tend to the animals or uh, sell some wool which by the way the wool situation here on this map has exploded of course our sheep population also exploded um, and we've got something like uh, 20 something uh, pallets of wool that has been produced just in uh, say a day and a half a game day and a half so um, we've got lots of wool as a matter of fact we're going to probably want to sell some wool even maybe before we get a great demand for it just because we don't have a lot of space over there uh, to store it and I've been moving it into the barn area just to make sure that we kept that area uh, product productive and everything because I certainly you know don't want it to just sit there and not not have the uh, not have the sheep producing because obviously that's counterproductive to what we want to do uh, the whole goal is to keep everybody producing as uh, as well as possible and so that's kind of what we're what we're doing and, and why we're doing it that way same with um, same with Panko farm um, you know we need to we need to keep everything everything productive because that generates money and um, money obviously is a good thing it makes our virtual farms go round and round and round all right well thank you so much for watching i appreciate you tuning in for this episode and um in every episode and i just wanted to thank all of my uh all of my subscribers all of my friends everyone that uh, comments and um, um provides you know uh, friendly uh, commentary uh, maybe even some friendly banter if I if I run into a fence post, you know, I I, I, uh, I Appreciate you guys keeping me honest. I, I try to leave those kind of things in uh, I do do a little bit of editing as I've explained before but I, I do tend to leave in my my fence post um, uh, Little incidents and stuff like that because it's just kind of it's kind of the way it goes and and I have yet to encounter a youtuber a virtual farming youtuber that uh, doesn't from time to time have some you know little near misses and have some collisions with trees or collisions with fence posts or whatever you know if anyone basically says that they are perfect at doing this and that's all they show well either either they really are that good and um, maybe they should be doing it in the real world or they're doing a lot of editing and covering that kind of stuff up because I think that just in the in the natural course of the gameplay stuff happens and um, it just it's part of the fun and I enjoy the banter I enjoy you guys uh, uh, calling me out when I you know drop the the header from 
you know, the raised height, uh, and I'm talking to you, uh, Matthew, uh, Doughboy2913. But anyway, I appreciate that because it's all fun, and, um, you know, who knows, maybe I do some of that stuff on purpose just to uh, see if you guys are watching my videos. Well, thank you again for watching. I appreciate it, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off because otherwise I will ramble and ramble, and I won't let you guys go. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. Please join in for another episode very, very soon here on Law Folds or on Pineco Farm. I appreciate you watching. Check out PCSG. Check out um, the Three Dudes Gaming Network. And if you're interested in that Penta DB50 trailer, um, go to my my website, grizzlybearsims.com. Again, that's grizzlybearsims.com. You'll find a link to my mod spreadsheet. On that mod spreadsheet, you'll find a link how to find it on PCSG. Um, it's right there. It's a wonderful mod, and I can't wait to uh, show it to you in action, uh, which maybe you'll get to see in the next episode or two. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.